Here are today's headlines. The Department of Justice files new charges against those involved in the smuggling of 6.4 billion pesos worth of illegal drugs. President Duterte and other agencies deliver additional aid for families affected by Mayon Volcano. The Davao City Police probes two personnel accused of hurting arrested children. And the winner of this year's Dinagyang Festival is set to perform on Philippine Independence Day in New York City. Good day. I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. The Department of Justice filed new charges against nine individuals implicated in the smuggling of the 6.4 billion peso shabu shipment seized last year. The customs broker involved in the case has surrendered to authorities. Here is our report. Customs broker Mark Taguba has surrendered to the National Bureau of Investigation. This was in response to the arrest warrant issued by the Manila Regional Trial Court over the drug case filed against him by the Department of Justice. The DOJ filed charges anew against the nine persons including Taguba and Chinese businessman Richard Tan in connection with the 6.4 billion peso shipment of illegal drugs last year. In a seven-page affidavit dated January 24, 2018, signed by Associate State Prosecutor Aristotle Reyes and Rodan Parocha, the DOJ filed charges of transportation and delivery of dangerous drugs defined and penalized under the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002 before the Valenzuela Regional Trial Court. No bail was recommended against the said respondents. The Manila RTC Branch 46 ordered the arrest of eight of the respondents in connection with the Shabu shipment case. Chen Zhulong was not included in the arrest order because of a pending motion to dismiss. The case was originally filed before the Valenzuela Regional Trial Court but was dismissed for lack of jurisdiction. The DOJ then refiled the case before the Manila Court. The DOJ found probable cause to indict for importation of dangerous drugs as well as a pattern of overt acts indicative of conspiracy to import the drugs into the country. The DOJ filed the case at the Valenzuela RTC last November 22. The case stemmed from the Bureau of Customs' discovery of the Shabu shipment at the Hongfei Logistics Warehouse in Valenzuela City on May 26 based on a tip from the Anti-Smuggling Bureau of the China Customs. The shipment managed to enter the country through the BOC after being declared as kitchenware, footwear, and moldings. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dulfo. The Commission on Appointments, or CA, deferred the appointment of Francisco Duque III as Health Secretary. Senator Gringo Honasan, chair of the CA Committee on Health, said the Commission needed more time to assess the Health Chief's plan in the department. Honasan said while it was not because of oppositors or the Degvaksha issue, the committee wanted to know more about the agency's efforts to address the anti-Dengue vaccine issue, among others. During his confirmation hearing, Duque denied the existence of any mafia in the agency before the committee. Former health consultant to the DOH, Dr. Francis Cruz, claimed there was a mafia that earned approximately $550 million in kickbacks from the 3.5 billion peso budget allotted for Dengvaksha. In a separate interview, however, Duque said that he would respect whatever decision the CA would make regarding his confirmation. Duque, who had only been DOH chief for three months, also served as health secretary during the term of former president and now Pampanga representative Gloria Macapagal Arroyo before he was appointed by President Rodrigo Duterte. Malacanang maintained that overall Deputy Ombudsman Melchor Arthur Carandang has to file his answer on a 90-day preventive suspension slapped against him by the office of the president. This despite Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales' refusal to implement suspension order against Carandang. Presidential spokesman Harry Roque insisted that Carandang must submit his answer within the 10-day period, which is set to end on February 9. The Office of the Executive Secretary charged and suspended Karandang for allegedly committing grave misconduct and dishonesty. He was accused of disclosing confidential and false information on the alleged bank records of President Rodrigo Duterte and his family. 
Morales claimed that the suspension issued against Karandang violates the independence of the Office of the Ombudsman. Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Salvador Panelo, however, believed that Karandang's suspension is presumed to be valid and legal until a competent court declares otherwise. Panelo also said President Duterte had no intention to intrude upon the independence of the Office of the Ombudsman. Panelo said while Karandang was free to question his suspension order, it must still be implemented or else it will violate legal processes. The Commission on Elections or COMELEC suspended the holding of the May 14 Barangay and Sagunian Kabataan elections in Marawi City. COMELEC spokesperson James Jimenez said the poll body ordered the suspension of the forthcoming polls due to the prevailing conditions in that city. He cited that there are no facilities available due to the damage caused by the conflict in the city and that the return of the people in Marawi City is not yet complete. The Barangay and SK elections in the rest of Mindanao will push through as scheduled. Jimenez said that the COMELEC will conduct an assessment of the situation after three months to determine if they will hold the village and youth polls there or not. Marawi City is currently undergoing rehabilitation after it was plagued by a five-month battle between government troops and the Malte Group, which started in May of last year. Skyway returned to its old toll payment scheme after motorists complained of heavy traffic caused by the opening of its new runway toll plaza and payment scheme. Skyway temporarily revert, reverted to its old pay-as-you-enter scheme for private vehicles coming from Alabang, Sukat, and Ikutan. Only Class 2 vehicles such as buses and delivery vans will be required to utilize the runway toll plaza for cash payments. Skyway O&M Corporation apologized for any inconvenience caused by the new system and appealed for understanding from the public. Under the new payment scheme, which was implemented early this week, motorists should stop at two toll booths, namely the payment booth and the new toll booth, where they will surrender their payment slips. Vehicles are made to pass specific lanes, whether they are paying via electronic toll collection, RFID stickers, or cash. The Skyway management said the new runway toll plaza was intended to facilitate faster toll collection and handle increased traffic volume. Still to come, President Duterte and other agencies deliver additional aid for families affected by Mayon Volcano. The Davao City Police probes two personnel accused of hurting arrested children. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. Ito ang gusto ko, total pera naman ng tao. To observe editorial independence through innovative programs and intelligence treatment, analysis of reports as well as the development of national and international significance. From February 19 to 21, 2018, the Presidential Communications Operations Office will launch the National Information Convention to strengthen partnership between the private and public sector, encourage communicators to influence for the common good, and to organize a movement to motivate society towards nation building. With over 1,500 communication practitioners participating in three days of intense communication courses. The National Information Convention Spurring national development and empowering communities through information. February 19 to 21, 2018 at the SMX Convention Center, SM Lanang, Davao City. The Department of Tourism is tapping into China as a tourism market with the launch of a direct flight from Xiamen City to Puerto Princesa, Palawan. Here is our report. 
The Department of Tourism is expecting an influx of Chinese tourists to the country with the first ever direct charter flight from Xiamen, a coastal city in Fujian province of China, to Puerto Princesa City, Palawan, starting February 2018. DOT Secretary Wanda Tulfoteo said they continue to welcome more Chinese tourists to the country as part of the improved diplomatic relationship between Manila and Beijing since President Rodrigo Duterte's state visit to China in 2017. The department paved way for the creation of Sham and Puerto Princesa route, which will be launched on February 10 by CND Travel Service China, a charter operator based in Shaman, with Philippine Airlines as the partner carrier. Regular operations will start on February 14 and 18, which will accommodate more visitors from mainland China. Benito Benson Jr., DOT Undersecretary for Tourism Development paired to the Philippine Route Development Team is working on another route which is the Cha Jin Puerto Princesa Route. To meet the growing demand of Chinese visitors to come to Boracay, Xiamen Airlines earlier mounted its direct air commercial services from Fuzhou, China to Kalibo, Aklan on a three times weekly frequency. The said new route was launched last January 12 by Xiamen Airlines with Uni Orient Travel as its major partner. China, the second largest source market of the country following Korea, produced nearly a million tourist arrivals from January to December last year. It is a huge growth of 43.33% from Chinese arrivals in 2016. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Chris Crismundo. President Rodrigo Duterte led the distribution of 400 transitional shelters to residents left homeless by the battle between government troops and terrorist groups in Marawi City. ARMM Governor Mujib Hataman witnessed the ceremony held on Tuesday, January 30 at the site of the temporary resettlement in Barangay, Sagon Sungan. Marcelino Escalada, Jr. General Manager of the National Housing Authority, said a total of 1,149 families are expected to transfer to the temporary shelters in March this year. The 11-hectare township will have school buildings, madrasa, houses with kitchen and washroom, wet and dry market, mosque, water supply, and a multi-purpose hall. The construction of the temporary shelters is part of Task Force Bangun Marawi's Recovery, Reconstruction and Rehabilitation Program for the city. Evacuees affected by Mayon Volcano received an additional 50 million pesos in aid from President Rodrigo Duterte. Meanwhile, other agencies raised about 119 million pesos in assistance for affected families. Here is our report. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council said aid extended to families displaced by Mayon Volcano's unrest has so far amounted to over 119 million pesos. The assistance comes from agencies including the Department of Social Welfare and Development, Department of Health, Office of Civil Defense, Philippine Red Cross, local government units, and non-government organizations. As of Wednesday morning, a total of 23,250 families from 61 barangays were affected by the Mayon Volcano's unrest. The NDRRMC said that over 19,000 families are currently being aided in 76 designated evacuation centers while nearly 3,000 are being served outside. Meanwhile, the presidential management staff handed over the promise of additional 50 million pesos as aid from President Rodrigo Duterte to the Mayon evacuees. President Duterte visited Albayo on Monday and personally assessed the ongoing disaster operations amid Mayon Volcano's eruption. During his visit, the President initially gave 20 million pesos to Albay Governor Al Francis Bichara and assured additional aid of 50 million pesos. Bichara thanked the President for fulfilling his promise to the Albayanos. The Governor said that the fund will be used for the food, sanitation, and health needs of the evacuees who fled their homes due to Mayon's eruption. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Bench Bondo. The Department of Education reiterated the use of open school data as an effective way to address concerns of education, stakeholders, as well as combat corruption. 
UNESCO said open data enables education officials and the public to monitor the sector's progress and identify any bottlenecks and malpractices. Education Secretary Leonor Briones pointed out that as DepEd actively promotes transparency and accountability, anyone is welcome to ask for information or data access. DepEd mentioned that among its strategies was the publication of a school report card and the creation of transparency boards. Under Secretary Jesus Mateo said, these aim to disclose vital information to stakeholders so they would be encouraged to use the data to come up with possible solutions to issues. Suzanne Grant Lewis, UNESCO International Institute for Educational Planning Director, however, noted that policies and capacity development must also exist to further improve the quality and delivery of education. For her part, UNESCO Philippine Secretary General Lilia Ramos Shahani called for strategies to ensure a wider reach of information even to those who do not have internet access. The Davao City Police Office vowed not to condone personnel that may have violated rights of suspects, including children. This after two policemen were accused of mauling children that broke curfew. Here is our report. Two mobile police officers are now under investigation by the Davao City Police Office for allegedly mauling three minors last January 21. DCPO spokesperson Maria Teresita Gaspan said the two police officers responded to a call from the Central 911 of an ongoing riot at around 1.15 a.m. The minors were already at the Barangay Hall of Barangay 19B Garcia Heights. One of the minors said he and his companions were just rescued for violating the curfew hour for minors and not for making riots. He said they were brought by the police officers to the City Social Services Development Office to sign a certain document. They were brought back to the Barangay Hall where the mowing incident, which was caught on CCTV cameras, happened. Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio, meanwhile, asked for an investigation to meet out the appropriate sanction if the policemen involved are found to have violated rules on apprehension. The mayor cautioned police that while minors committing crime should be taken into custody, force should not be used against them unless police authority is ignored or lives are in danger. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Lillian Meliehor. Up next... A proposed ordinance in Puerto Princesa seeks to penalize bullying of persons with disabilities. The winner of this year's Dinagyang Festival is set to perform on Philippine Independence Day in New York City. These and more when the PNA Newsroom returns. A Japanese donated Beechcraft King Air TC-90 under the operational control of the Northern Luzon Command conducted its first maritime air patrol mission over the Bajo de Masinloc or Scarborough Shoal. Nolcom spokesperson Lt. Col. Isagani Nato said the TC-90 made its maiden flight Wednesday morning over Bajo de Masinloc in Masinloc, Zambales. It flew around the shoal for about 800 feet above sea level, sighting four Filipino fishing boats together with nine Chinese vessels comprising four Chinese Coast Guard vessels, four unknown vessels, and a fishing vessel. TC-90 with tail number 3 
390 was one of the two Japanese aircraft donated to the Philippines last March 27. The TC-90's employment under Philippine service boosted the capacity of the Navy to conduct limited airlift, reconnaissance and surveillance within NOLCOM's area of jurisdiction. It will also complement the efforts of the Philippine Air Force to monitor and watch over the three maritime areas in northern and central Luzon. NATO said NOLCOM will utilize all available assets and resources to protect our national territory and assert sovereign rights over the country's maritime domain. A proposed ordinance filed before the Puerto Princesa City Council seeks to declare illegal the verbal and nonverbal ridicule against persons with disabilities or PWD. Councillor John G. Rodriguez said, The measure seeks to protect the rights of the PWDs by dispelling the stigma and discrimination against them to encourage their full and effective participation and inclusion in society. Included as a punishable act in the proposed ordinance is public ridicule or making fun or contemptuous imitation or making a mockery of PWDs, whether in words or actions due to their impairment. Violators may suffer a penalty of 1,000 to 3,000 pesos with imprisonment of less than six months. In the Philippines, PWD's rights are upheld by Republic Act 7277 or the Magna Carta for Disabled Persons, which provides stiffer penalties to all forms of discrimination against PWDs. The Person with Disability Affairs Office said the common complaints they received were public ridicule against PWDs. However, since 2016, only two came forward to their office to seek help in filing a case. The 71st edition of the Philippine Airlines Seniors and Men's Regular Interclub Championships will be hosted by the Marapara and Binitin Country Clubs in Bacolod City starting March 1st. PAL President Jaime Bautista is expected to hit the ceremonial drive and signal the start of seniors' play on February 26, Monday at Marapara. Luisita and Manila Southwoods are expected to shoot to extend their respective reigns in the seniors and men's divisions of the country's unofficial team golf championship. Kanlubang is again listed as the chief threat to Luisita, even if the multi-titled Tommy Manotok is again expected to miss play. The seniors' field will also have three days to sample both courses, though early reports have it that the Luisitans have already come over to test both layouts and not leave anything to chance. Southwoods will come into the event as the heavy favorite, with Japanese teenager Yuto Katsuragawa confirming that he will return to play for the Carmona-based squad. An Ati tribe is bringing the Dinagyang Festival to New York City in time for Philippine Independence Day this June. They are set to represent the message of unity spread by Ilongos in celebrating Dinagyang. Here is our report. Dinagyang Festival will again romp the streets of New York City this coming June in time for the celebration of the Philippine Independence Day. Georgie Halandoni, chairperson of the special events for the 120th Independence Day Parade and Cultural Show, arrived in Iloilo City last week to personally extend the invitation to Mayor Jose Espinosa III and the winning Ati tribe. The parade will be held at the famous Madison Avenue in New York City with more than 120,000 expected spectators. The festival first set foot in New York City way back in 2011 upon the invitation of the Philippine Independence Day Council, Incorporated. This year's winner, Tribu Panayanon, is from the Iloilo City National High School. Dr. Blesilda Floro, principal of the Iloilo City National High School and tribe manager of Panayanon, said their name was conceptualized in 2013 to showcase the diverse ethnic legacy of the people and towns of the entire Panay Island. Ramon Kuwa Loxin, president of the Iloilo Dinagyang Foundation Incorporated, said the annual Dinagyang validates contributions from everyone, especially Ilongos, who strive to sustain every development gained through unity. This year, three international groups were invited to perform to add color to the celebration. These were the Ansiong Namsadang Baldiogi Festival, Te Amurangi of Ruapotaka, Mare from Auckland City, New Zealand, and a cheer dance from the Gomi University in Korea. Loxin said Dinagyang now attracts international performers and tourists to immerse in a unique intercultural exchange, making this an opportunity to have a genuine celebration through camaraderie, 
services, and charity. The Dinagyang Festival is a celebration in honor of Senor Santo Nino. It started as simple merrymaking when the replica of the image of Senor Santo Nino was brought to Iloilo from Cebu by the Cofradia del Santo Nino de Cebu in 1968. It has then evolved into a religious and cultural event drawing millions of spectators annually. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Police arrested the consultant of the National Democratic Front of the Philippines in Quezon City. Rafael Bailosis and his companion identified as Guillermo Roque, a member of the New People's Army, were arrested by members of the Criminal Investigation and Detection Group. Authorities confiscated two caliber 45 pistols, ammunition, and magazines. Bailosis and Roque are currently detained in Camp Crame. Bailosis is the first consultant to be arrested after President Rodrigo Duterte cancelled peace talks with the communist group in response to atrocities done by the NPA. He is identified as a member of the NDFP Reciprocal Working Group on Political and Constitutional Reforms. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque meanwhile said that Bailosis no longer enjoys immunity from arrest after President Duterte cancelled the peace talks with the communist rebels. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Ben Shbondo. And here's another look at today's headlines. The Department of Justice files new charges against those involved in the smuggling of 6.4 billion pesos worth of illegal drugs. President Duterte and other agencies deliver additional aid for families affected by Mayon Volcano. The Davao City Police probes two personnel accused of hurting arrested children. And the winner of this year's Dinagyang Festival is set to perform on Philippine Independence Day in New York City. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and that it is doing for the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of the hottest news and the latest information that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm William Theo. Good day.